If you think that a Bill of Rights is what sets us apart, you're crazy. Every banana republic in the world has a Bill of Rights. Every president for life has a Bill of Rights. <laughs> The Bill of Rights of the, of the former evil empire, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, was much better than ours. I mean it literally. It was much better. We guarantee freedom of speech and of the press. Big deal. They guaranteed freedom of the speech of the press, of street demonstrations and protests, and anyone who is, who is caught trying to suppress criticism of the government will be called to account. Whoa, that, that is wonderful stuff. Of course. Just words on paper. What, what our framers would have called a parchment guarantee. And the reason is that the real constitution of the Soviet Union, you think of the word constitution, it doesn't mean ability, it means structure. Say a person has a sound constitution, has a sound structure. The real constitution of the Soviet Union, which is what our framers debated that, that, that whole summer in Philadelphia in 1787. They didn't talk about the Bill of Rights. That was an afterthought, wasn't it? That constitution of the Soviet Union did not prevent the centralization of power in one person or in one party. And when that happens, the game is over. The Bill of Rights is just what our framers would call a parchment guarantee. So the, the real key to uh, the distinctiveness of America is the structure of our government. One part of it, of course, is the independence of the judiciary. But there's, there's, there's a lot more. There are very few countries in the world, for example, that, that have a bicameral legislature. Oh, England has a House of Lords for the time being, but the House of Lords has no substantial power. They can just make the Commons pass a bill a second time. France has a Senate, it's honorific. Italy has a Senate, it's honorific. Very few countries have two separate bodies in the legislature equally powerful. That's a lot of trouble, as you gentlemen doubtless know, to get the same language through two different bodies elected in a different fashion. Very few countries in the world have a, a separately elected uh, chief executive. Sometimes I go to Europe to talk about separation of powers. A and when I get there, I find that all I'm talking about is independence of the judiciary. Because the Europeans don't even try to divide the, the two political powers, the two political branches, the legislature and the chief executive. In all of the parliamentary countries, the chief executive is the creature of the legislature. There's never any disagreement between them and the, and, and the, the prime minister, as there is sometimes between you and the president. When, when there's a disagreement, they just kick him out. They have a no-confidence vote, a new election, and they get a prime minister who agrees with the legislature. And, uh, you know, the, the Europeans look at this system and they say, well, it passes one house, it doesn't pass the other house, sometimes the other house is in the control of a different party, it passes both, and then this president who has a veto power vetoes it, and they look at this and they say, uh, it, is, it is gridlock. And, and I, I hear Americans saying this nowadays, and there's a lot of it going around. They, they talk about a dysfunctional government be, be, because there's disagreement. And, 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 they, and the framers would have said, yes, that's exactly the way we set it up. We, we wanted this to be power, uh, contradicting power, because the main, uh, the main ill that beset us, as, as Hamilton said in, in The Federalist, when he talked about a separate Senate. He said, yes, it seems inconvenient, but inasmuch as the main ill that besets us is an excess of legislation, it won't be so bad. This is 1787. He didn't know what an excess of legislation was. <laughs> so uh, uh, unless Americans can appreciate that and learn, learn to love the separation of powers, which means learning to love the gridlock, which the framers believed would be the main protection of minorities, the main protection. If, if a bill is about to pass that really comes down hard on some minority, they think it's terribly unfair, it doesn't take much to throw a monkey wrench into, into, this, into this complex system. So Americans should, uh, should appreciate that, and, and they should learn to love the gridlock. Uh, it's, it's there for a reason, so that the legislation that gets out will, will be good legislation. Uh, 
and thus conclude uh, my opening remarks. Mm -hmm.